Hi, my name is Rich Harrington. I'm the publisher of Photofocus.com, as well as a team member that had a chance to work on the brand new Luminar. And what I want to show you today is a first look at Luminar 3 and its core features. I want to make sure you understand how to really approach this application and get the most done with it. This is just a quick look, but in about 30 minutes, we'll walk you through all of the core features that you need to know. All right, let's begin by launching. When you open Luminar for the first time, you'll be welcomed by a screen that helps you get your library set up. What you need to do is tell it where a few things are. So just click the Let's Get Started button, and then select the photo library that you want to add to begin with. Luminar works with folders, real folders on your hard drive. So it's assuming that you want to add some images that you already have on your computer or a drive. So you're just gonna pick those now. Additionally, you could pick a location where those photos are stored, so new photos that you add will be copied there. Just click the Modify button here if you want to choose a default location. By default, it's going to choose your Pictures folder or Photos folder, but I'm going to pick a new folder that I want to use here. In this case, I have a small folder of some Lightroom libraries that I consolidated, and there's multiple folders within. I'll click Choose Folder. If you'd like, you can also add additional folders by just clicking here and navigating and selecting them. This will allow you to pick multiple images. Next, choose where the catalog is stored. The catalog contains your edits. Additionally, it'll also store a thumbnail image in case a drive goes offline. This way you can still browse and rate images even if an external hard drive isn't connected. The catalog stores every edit non-destructively with a very small state file for each image. I'm going to go ahead and store this in the default location, but I could choose here another location if desired. When ready, click the Next button. Continue to click through the remaining slides until you've browsed and gotten familiar with the basics. Sometimes it'll pause for a second as it's building in the background doing the initial setup. But you can continue to move through these slides at your own pace. When you get to the last one, just click Let's Go and Luminar opens. Let's go ahead and maximize this window. Now you'll see that the folder and all of the subfolders have been added. This makes it really easy to quickly browse and I could jump to just the images from a particular shoot or date. There we go. And if I decide to, it's very easy to see this content. For example, at the top here, we have different controls for narrowing it down. For example, I could sort by different things like labels or ratings or the date or edit time. Now, besides importing images from the computer itself, you can also bring things in from a memory card. Let's go ahead and plug this in. And once it's connected, I could just choose File Import. Now, from the File menu, I'll select Import Images. Simply navigate to the drive that you want to import from, like so. Now, I'm going to cancel for a second and make a new folder. Here we go. And I'll call this Imports. Now what I want to do is add the images there. So with the file import command, I can navigate to the drive, open it up, and select the images that I want. Now simply choose where you want it to be stored, and if the images should be copied or moved. Copying will make a duplicate, and move will actually erase them on the drive and move them to the new location. You can also decide to organize them into folders. For example, I could place these into folders by day. And when I'm all set, I'll just click the Import to Folder command. You see that the images are quickly copied and added to the new location. Additionally, the entire folder is well organized. I see in here, for example, the month. These were captured in April of 2015. And I can quickly view by date the different images that were captured and see them well organized. And in this case, there were also a few images that were edited afterwards, so the modification date here of these developed files is also included, and I see those as well. So, nice simple structure. Now, if I change my mind, 
I can also remove this here. But you'll see that if I show this in the finder, it's actually added to that folder. And there they are. Maybe I'm cleaning things up and I decide to get rid of those previously edited images. When I switch back to Luminar, you'll see that it's updated. That's because these folders are in sync. If I want to rename this folder, let's call this Island Trip. And we take a look at that at the finder level. You'll see it's actually renamed with the new name. So this works quite well. Now in this case, I had already imported these images earlier, so I'm just gonna get rid of this. I'll simply delete this forever and the images are moved into the trash. Now, they're out of my library, but they're stored in my regular system trash can. So if I needed to, I could pull them out of there. All right, you see how easy it is to bring images in by folder or by importing. We'll take a look at one more workflow in a moment. That's called Quick Edit. But let's go ahead and develop an image so you see why Luminar works so well. I'm gonna come over here to this folder called Arizona. And I want to really bring out some details in an image. So let's select this one of the basket here. From the Edit tab, I'm going to choose a workspace. Workspaces just allow you to get access to the filters that you want in an easy configuration. One of those is called Quick and Awesome. And it allows you to quickly adjust things like color and contrast with the Accent AI slider, which targets things very effectively. And then a little bit of clarity for more depth. I'm going to add one more filter here. Let's do the adjustable gradient. I'll just type into the search engine what I want, and it finds it. And now we can adjust this. Let's rotate here and create a little gradual blend. So now I'm going to darken this area to the right and pull down the color and increase the contrast so it falls off a bit. And you see how easy that was to create a custom transition with the lighting. That looks great. Now the image is automatically adjusted and you'll see up here under history that all of my edits were tracked. Everything is non-destructive, so if you need to, you can go backwards or forwards through your history to see your edits. Okay, let's go ahead to another folder. In this case, I'm gonna switch to Amsterdam. And I wanna enhance an image, just really bring out some details. Let's come here to an image of the old church. And in this case, I'm gonna bring some details out in the photo. Let's go ahead and select the raw file here of the old church. And I'll go to the edit panel and select the professional workspace for complete control. Workspaces are simply a safe configuration of filters. Luminar has 51 filters in Luminar 3, so that's a lot of choices. And it can get a bit cluttered if they were all applied. So instead, you can use a workspace to get to a collection of tools. Luminar ships with several, and you could pick from ones that you want and build your own. All right, let's go to the lens corrections here, and I see that the lens distortion is automatically being removed. It's pretty minimal for this lens. And what I also want to do is just look at this. I notice that it's not exactly straight. It's close, but not quite right. Let's go to the Transform tab here and deal with this image. I'm going to tilt it a little bit to get a straighter image. That looks better. And a little bit of rotation there to straighten it out. Now I can easily adjust and move the image up or down in the frame as needed so it gets the proper composition. And while we're at it, let's just invoke crop and get past some of that distortion there caused by the tilt. There we go and I can reframe that as needed. Good, let's click done, and the image updates. Now, I wanna make a few other changes. It looks like I missed a little spot there, but we'll fix that later with some cloning. Let's develop this image to bring out the details. So, taking advantage of controls here, I can bring out a little bit of clarity and really refine things here with contrast. But for me, the big winner is still Accent AI, which applies a selective tone and contrast adjustment based on what each zone needs. And you see it's developing the shadows differently than the highlights. And some parts of the photo are untouched. 
There's also Sky Enhancer, which is great for landscape images. I'm going to put a little dehaze in here to cut through the detail, and I like where this is going. Now, Advanced Contrast lets me bring out details, and it really starts to bring out the contrast in the different tonal ranges. And that's nice on the midtones, but I want to go a step further. Let's click Add here and type in the word Details. There's a great filter called Details Enhancer, and I'll just drag that up in the stack so it comes a little earlier. Details Enhancer lets you target different areas of a photo, so I can really start to bring things out there in the medium and the large areas for better definition. And if we look at that filter on and off, it really did a great job of enhancing the image. You can also do traditional things like curves and polarizing adjustments or HSL to target any areas. But I'm a big fan of a few other ones. For example, let's do split warmth. Let's go ahead and drag that up a little bit and put that earlier in the stack. And this allows me to make the warm areas warmer and the cool areas cooler. And you see it's very simple. Structure is great for extra details. LUT mapping for creative colors. And you can choose from several built-in LUTs or add your own. And an excellent vignette control so you can easily adjust the image. And give it a gentle feather and even brighten up the middle. I like that. But there's a few things about this image I'm not crazy about. I see a few objects that I'd like to remove. So let's invoke the eraser tool. This makes it simple to remove elements from a shot. Now what I can do is just paint over the things I don't want. For example, in this lower left corner, let's erase this little gap. There we go. And I'll click the erase button. And it's gone. Looking at the floor, things look good. Oh, but we've got a chair here. Well, let's paint that out. Click the Erase button, and it's gone. How about these people here? Let's just paint them out. Right bracket for a bigger brush if needed. There we go. And this other gentleman. Click Erase, and it analyzes the surrounding pixels and comes up with new ones and just does a great job at removing objects that you don't want. Now I've got the type of picture I want, and I click Done. But Luminar has a few other cool options. While I'm here, let's explore the filters catalog. You'll notice that things are organized by category, so you can quickly sort, and I can choose things like Creative. From here, I want to do a little bit of a boost to this image. Now, this clone layer has just the erasing results on it, so it's easily targeted. But I can also add an adjustment layer here to refine things. And for this, we're going to get a little fancy. Let's apply sun rays plus the Orton effect and golden hour. Sun rays is really cool. It lets you target where the sun should come from. And you can even set that off image. Then adjust the radius of the light, as well as the length of the rays that are coming in, and their color temperature. And you can even refine this here for a nice look, controlling penetration for how much it pushes through things like windows or clouds. That looks good. Let's put a little bit of Orton effect in here, which adds a nice rich glow and I can brighten the scene up a bit with it as well. And then golden hour here to dial in the warmth. To finish this off, I find that putting Accent AI at the end is the perfect safety tool. It allows me to fill in exposure and light control very quickly. And now it's done. If we look at the original image and the end result, it's very different and it's much more in line with what I desired. You can continue to refine things, deal with advanced lens correction or refinement, but really dial in the type of image that you're going for. But Luminar is also able to work incredibly fast. Some of you don't like doing detailed edits like this. Well, you don't have to. 
It offers intelligent looks and quick presets that really drive results. Plus, the use of artificial intelligence can save you a huge amount of time. Let's go back to the library here and we'll explore a collection of images. Let's go here and select this landscape photo. And from the edit panel, I'm just going to work with Quick and Awesome. Accent AI with one slider fills in the light. And Sky Enhancer targets the sky for quick refinement. If you need to, toss on the tone adjustment. And the use of Smart Tone makes it simple to target the middle and bring out the exposure without seeing shift in color. You can easily refine the midpoint and then adjust things like the white point for really bright clouds and the black point for rich shadows, giving you excellent dynamic range. Of course, there's clarity, but you'll find that in other tools too. I instead prefer the Details Enhancer. This does an incredible job of letting you target areas and really bring out the details in the small or large areas. You can even reduce detail for things like smoother skies. Have something distracting? Not a big deal. Just choose the Erase tool or the Clone and Stamp tool. And with a few clicks, you could paint out the objects you don't want. Let's just get rid of that. And this little distraction down here. I'll click Erase. Comes up with new pixels. And it's gone. There we go with Done. And I've got the image I want. Whether it's erasing, enhancing, or building out a custom image, it's very fast to do so. And when you come up with a look that you like, remember, just save that as a look. I'm going to call this Bright Landscape. And we can go ahead and turn back on that clone layer. But now, I can select other images that would benefit from this. Let's go ahead and open up our Looks browser, and you see there's that preset, and with one click, the type of adjustment I like is applied to another image. And this is super intelligent. So as you look at different types of photos with different lighting conditions, those AI filters will automatically adjust to the content. And if it's a little too much, no big deal. With the one slider here, you can refine the amount and dial in just the right look without having to go back and tweak everything. This amount slider lets you dial in the right look super fast and easy. And speaking of looks, as you see here, I've got a whole bunch, including a special PhotoFocus set that's available for free download. Just visit our website at PhotoFocus.com. If you want more looks, just come on over and choose Get More Luminar Looks. And on the Skylum website, you'll find a whole bunch of great options. In the marketplace here, there are signature presets and new presets. For example, here's some black and white ones that I've made or some really cool ones from other photographers to give you new looks and styles. Feel free to check all those out, and with one click, you can unlock a bunch of options. And many of these are totally free. Let's go back to Luminar. Luminar is full featured, and there's all sorts of great options to organize your images. You can work with albums, you can rate images, you can quickly find things. These sorts of tools allow you to just move through a shoot and get the results you want. For example, Let's just say I needed to process a shoot. I could jump right into a folder and browse the thumbnails and quickly change these to really see what I want. Using keys like P, I can mark my picks. Or I could press X to mark a reject. Using the keys 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, assign ratings. And quickly go through and make my favorite selects from the shoot. Press the space bar and you can look at the image. Press it again and you're right back out. And as you see, this just makes it super easy to find the images that you want to use. As you mark your picks with the P key, those can then be located again easily. You'll notice up top here you have the ability to sort by rating or see the ones you've marked as favorites with the pick key. And this lets you drill in and quickly find content. And as you start to clean things up, Cleaning them up in these folders actually cleans up your hard drive, which makes it really easy to use. So, these commands are really awesome. But, you don't have to use the library. 
Luminar also supports a quick edit workflow, so you can just open up an image and enhance it. You can use it as a standalone application this way. I'll just choose File Open and navigate to an image that I want to use. Pick a photo that you like and then simply click Open. Now, Luminar gives you all the controls you need. Accent AI for quick enhancement, Sky Enhancer to target the sky. The ability for clarity, creative presets, etc. I'm a big fan of Tone and Smart Tone, making it simple to just refine the midpoint for what you want. See a distraction? No big deal. Clone and stamp or erase make it simple to remove. Just target the distracting element and paint over it. We don't need these garbage cans or these steps. Let's remove those. And this couple over here on the rock. But I do like this person standing solo here. I click the erase tool. It analyzes the surrounding pixels and comes up with new ones. And it's gone. I'll click done. I like the base image, but I'd like a creative style. So let's just add an adjustment layer. Now I can browse my looks. I'm going to stick with some of the new looks here. Let's go here to landscape. And you'll notice with one click, I can explore different creative options very quickly. If I find something I like, I can continue to refine it or dial it in. With the amount slider, if it's too strong, it's very easy to dial in the perfect mix. And you see a wealth of choices here to give you exactly what you want. Now, back in the library panel, it's just stored in the Quick Edit collection. In fact, any image you open is stored in the Quick Edit group. And then later on, if you want, just drag them into a folder for storage. When you're done with an image, you'll find it's easy to export. The Export to Image command gives you complete control. You also can easily send the image to other photo editing applications on your computer, such as Photoshop and Lightroom Classic. And speaking of Photoshop and Lightroom, it's also a fully capable plugin. It works with Photoshop, Lightroom, Aperture, and Photos for Mac. All you need to do is in Luminar, click on the Luminar or File menu and choose Install Plugins. And you can now easily install it into your operating system. This means that when you're working in another photo editor, if you've already got a workflow you like, it's super easy. For example, let's say I'm working in Lightroom and I decide to select a panoramic photo. I can now easily merge that into a panorama. Lightroom will take all those different pieces, figure out the overlap, and give me a recommended stitch. That looks good. And I'll click Merge. The new file is created. There it is. Now if I like, I could choose to edit that as a TIFF in Luminar, but I generally prefer to hand off the raw file. So from the File Plugin Extras, I'll just select Transfer to Luminar 3. In this case, my aerial panel comes over. I've got complete control. And let's just switch to the aerial workspace. A quick click of the eyedropper and I could set a custom white balance. And we'll just dial that in, that looks good. A little bit of Accent AI. And the Sky Enhancer. It's looking great. A little dehaze on the overall image helps. And I'm going to add the Details Enhancer to really bring out some of the details here. Remember, this filter catalog is just a search engine. And that worked great for bringing out the trees. I'll tone down the sky. I like that. Let's adjust the horizon line here. There we go. And a little lift to the bottom and a decrease to the top. Warm it up with golden hour. And that really looks great. Now, with a click of apply, it's automatically returned back to Lightroom. All those adjustments are applied to that raw file and it's returned as a high quality TIFF to my Lightroom catalog. There it is. And it comes in. Let's take a look at the catalog itself. And we'll just search for panos. And you see, 
Here's the Lightroom version, and here's the Enhanced Luminar version, with quite a bit of extra detail. You could, of course, continue to develop the image, take advantage of boundary crop, or refine the image as needed. Obviously, with the stitched pano, it is necessary to crop that image a little bit. There we go. And let's just dial that in. There we go. And I've got the final photo. So as you see, whether you're looking to enhance your Photoshop, Lightroom, Aperture, or Photos for Mac workflow, or a new standalone application, Luminar 3 is a complete and comprehensive solution. Be sure to check out PhotoFocus for lots of great article ideas and more videos on how to get things done with Luminar, and head over to the Skylum website where their education team has a ton of free resources and webinars to help unlock the true power of the application. My name's Rich Harrington. Thanks for watching.